Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Lovett. Thank you for joining this episode of the Christian Mystic Podcast. In this episode, I have a conversation with my buddy Derek, Truth Seeker. You can find all his material uh, on his website, truthseeker.com, and his his YouTube channel. Um, you find his his content enjoyable. Go on, head on over there to check out his podcasts and interviews. And his music as well. Um, in this conversation, we touch on a little bit about the prophets, whether they got it right or wrong. <laughs> uh, Trisika's convinced that perhaps that they were lying to us, which, you know what, the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know, there's a lot in scripture about prophets who don't profit people, <laughs> prophets who don't puff profit. You know, that's from Jeremiah 23. And there's a lot in scripture about people, you know, the Lord actually declaring, I didn't send them. I didn't give them this message. And yet they ran with it. You know, could that be the case with this whole prophecy about Trump? I don't actually believe so. I don't believe so. I think that whatever is said to any of his prophets, to any of his servants, to any of his saints, um, you know, that he has an intention in that. Just like he said to Jonah, you know, this is my this is where I'm coming from. He said to Jonah, you know, go and preach this message. Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days, right? So he goes there, he starts preaching that message. He take, takes him three days. So like first day, it's 40 days. Next day, 39 days, the countdown has begun, right? To their destruction. And then he sits back and waits for their destruction. Did it ever happen? No, because they responded a certain way, didn't they? And so perhaps the prophecies that the prophets were given, you know, maybe people didn't respond in the right way. Maybe the master chess player God has a beautiful design in whatever outcome we see actually happening. Like, okay, uh, things have been changed, <laughs> you know, and so the prophets look like they have egg on their faces, right? Now it's true that some probably, probably just kind of jumped on the bandwagon and they didn't really hear from God. But I, I know of a couple who did hear from God very clearly. You know, and I trust these people. I trust their walk with God. And so, hey, is Trump going to be back in office soon? Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe not though. And maybe they're the prophets with egg on their faces and there was there was a purpose in it all, you know? Um, I really stand by the scripture. It says, judge nothing before the time. And who are you to judge another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. And God is able to make him stand. And he will stand, the scriptures say. So I really, uh, I really think it's wise for us not to take a stand um, <laughs> against... I don't know anything. I don't know. Here's 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 the real crux of it, is that God respects our free will. We, God is sovereign, and so are you. You know, we manifest our own destiny and reality, and who knows in what multiverse we ended up in. You know, like maybe there was a multiverse where yeah, Trump was back in office. That was true for some people, because they went that track. I know it's hard to imagine that. Like what? What are you talking about? Multiverse. Well, I think that every option is explored in the divine mind, you know, just kind of like, you know, Dr. Strange kind of like, you know, when he was meditating and he's seeing all these possible futures and options. Well, there's only one that led to the, <laughs> the victory that we see in the final, you know, movie there, Marvel movie, right? Of the Avengers. So just, I wanted to share just a couple thoughts in that regard and just kind of give you something to think about. And uh, I hope you really enjoy this. We talk about music right from the get-go, one of my favorite artists. And just know, I mean, like, I think there was something a little passive aggressive in my approach and conversation. I kind of felt bad about that, which is kind of why I sat on this interview for a while. You know, I didn't publish it right away because I'm like, do I edit all that out? I don't know. So I chose just not to. I chose just to give you the whole thing. 
and you know you can see that I was in the wrong maybe my friend Derek is in the wrong too about certain things we're all just trying to figure this out and I just think that humility is the way forward with all of this with prophecy and you know who we judge and who we don't and what kind of stands we take about things um, I think wisdom lies in just just being an observer and also being a manifester of the best possible reality for you and your sphere of influence. Okay? Being sovereign in a, in a good way. What sort of sovereign being will you be? How will you respond to the message? Will we repent and Nineveh is saved? Hooray! Is there going to be a joyful end to this? That's up to you. That's up to me. And so I, I urge us not to, not to judge one another and to be kind to the prophets as well. You know, because sometimes they get it wrong. And sometimes they're so sure about something. Sometimes they think they, they really heard from God. I know I've said things on my channel where I'm like, I think I really heard from God on this one. But then, like, ah, oh, you're kind of off, Daniel, you know? And I just I just accept my mistakes with humility too. And, I, and I'll repent. I mean, sometimes I'll make videos. And here I am going on and on about it, right? Taking up your time instead of getting to the interview. But like, I, I do want to go the way of humility. That's what I'm trying to say here. So I humble myself to my brother, Truth Seeker, Truth Seeker, Derek. Bless you. I love you, man. And I enjoyed the conversation. And I, I learned a lot through just talking it out. So I thank him for his time. And just if you want to bless him and check out his content, please do so. There'll be links in the description below for his YouTube channel, his website, his music. Yes, he's a musician, wonderful musician as well. <laughs> but uh, so I count him as a friend and I always will. So enjoy. I haven't heard of that. Ataya? Ataya. A-T-Y-Y-A. You gotta check this out, dude. It's wonderful music. So it's, it's very tribal. I like tribal. Wonderful. And instrumental too. So there's no nobody's dogma. <laughs> and that's what you that's what you end up with lyrics sometimes, you know. Dogma. As much as I like a lot of pop music, I mean like I put one on just now and it was you know, barefoot with a bottle of wine, want you to stay tonight, you know, all this stuff. I'm like, what? Okay. You're putting it, you're putting people in a certain mindset, right? This is why lyrics are, are so important. Like, what do you, what's, what's of eternal value? What do you want to convey? Yeah. You know, in music. I like that. Sounds good. Oh yeah. Ataya. Oh, you'll love it, dude. You will love it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, Festival singing's huge, bro. What is it? The festival scene, yeah, like where they play this music, or no words, and everybody's yeah. just dancing and having a good time. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love dancing. I love dancing to this. I tell you, I did. I did one festival um, back in uh, 2015. It was so weird because everybody knew who I was. You know, yeah. like they were like, oh, true seeker. They had people listening to my music. I was like, oh wow, this is strange. <laughs> oh man, great to finally meet you and. It was so awesome, man. You know, it was only, yeah. and I, I did a little festival too after that, and it was kind of the same thing. Like not as much because it was smaller, but really cool to, like obviously my music, you know, fits in with 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 that crowd. So it's cool. Very nice. Yes. What do you think that kind of music is just going to bring some some good unity that Jesus is looking for in the world? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and I, you know, we see Jesus just in love. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and light and yeah. and friendship and camaraderie and which is uh, non judgment. You know what I'm saying? Like acceptance, like radical yeah. acceptance. Like you see a lot of that going on there. Now, is that all that Jesus is or all that Christ is? No, but that's a huge part that we've the church has been missing. I think that that's why freedom of expression, freedom of dance, you know what I'm saying? Like there's so much 
uh, to that, that the church has missed in, in their doing in, in that scene. So, yeah, that's sure. really what I, want, what I want to talk about today. And I'm, I've already started recording, so we're, yeah. we're going, <laughs> but let's talk about that. Let's talk about love. And then the more we learn about love, the less we're going to do anything that's contrary to love, the more we're going to be in alignment with the kingdom yeah. of heaven, the more we're going to figure out that, you know, uh, cheating people and, and harming them in any way, uh, taking something from them. Uh, it, love is all about giving. In fact, yeah. in, inherent in the word ahava, which is the Hebrew word for love, I just learned this, is giving. It's other-centered, self-giving love, you know? And uh, music can be a great rallying point for that. Mm -hmm. I think about, you know, as we're discussing this, I'm thinking about the rainbow gathering, you know, the 10,000 mm -hmm. hippies gathering in the woods to just, you know, go after world peace kind of yeah. thing, you know, which I find to be a very beautiful kingdom of god thing yeah um I, I see you know again i see god and and all that stuff and um you know have learned to judge according to the fruit you know and they say no you judge according to the message you you judge according to the profession of faith listen your fruit is your profession of faith so to to you know you can tell being around those people man there's some beautiful people in that scene and uh and i think if you know the jesus movement you know was a was birthed out of a revival from the hippie movement in the 70s 60s and 70s um you know where all the christians got well, all, all the hippies got born again and they started going to church and hearing the message of the gospel and responding and they're showing up to churches barefoot and there's a bunch of old footage that you can see of them just hanging out in these churches and the weird thing is like the pastors try to make them cut their hair and put shoes on and all this stuff and really take that 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 carefree culture away from them and try to put suits and ties on them and you know, make them traveling evangel, and they just tried to like mold them into what Western Christianity looked like at the time. But we did see a revival in that that hippie movement back then, you know. And it's really cool to be able to meet some of those people who were a part of it. I know even I think Gil had somebody on his show yesterday uh, where they were talking about the the, the Jesus movement of the seventies, and um, I think Greg Laurie was a part of that uh, movement, and so to see Christ in those subcultures, man. I mean, I come from uh, the Christian hardcore metal scene underground and we would play bars and, and, uh, and, and just go out and play churches, youth groups. We played where whoever would let us set up. And there was just, there's these subcultures of Christian movements where, you know, Christ is glorified and there's people who aren't accepted usually by the, the mainstream churches or whatever, but they find where they belong. And it's sad that, you don't belong in the church. Maybe it's by design. Maybe you should thank God that they didn't open their doors and embrace you because what whatever that comes with. And so I think if the church did embrace everybody, then no one would be out in the world kind of being that example. We'd be preaching to the choir. We wouldn't have to go and book a show at a bar. We could just go to the youth group. You know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, that's with my music and my ministry as well, being able to, you know, I don't call my music Christian music. Other people might call, say I'm a Christian artist or whatever. Um, but it, it just to take that brand off where it's people listen to it outside of the mainstream church, you know? And so, you know, if the salt, if, if, if salt loses its, it, it's, it's, it's flavor, it's of no use. And so, you know, we don't light a, um, a candle to put it under a, lampshade you know we have to go out and be the light of the world so to see god in these subcultures man hippie movement christian hardcore movement i mean there's a whole bunch there's a whole bunch more you know that that we probably don't even know about that exist and are that are thriving today yeah absolutely so much running through my mind um one thing i remember is watching a live stream you did of performance of one of your concerts of you know some of your music and you did a really great job with that. Um, have you been doing more, any of that over the last year or something? Um, I've been really busy. Um, not, not, I didn't, haven't done any more live stream concerts. I've been asked to, and yeah. on, on a music level, it's been hard because what I do, I perform off of tracks. So there's a lag, 
And I've literally had to turn down like online conferences and stuff because if you play a song on your end or even on my end and I rap to it in real time, yeah. there's a latency. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to be on timing. I'm going to be off timing. So I've turned down opportunities and people are like, no, you know, they kind of get offended. It seems like and I said, no, I, I just can't do it unless we do it this way. So with OBS, I'm able to, to set a latency. I have to listen oh. to it. I have to, nice. you know what I'm saying? Wrap the words. So it like, it'll give you like a couple milliseconds before it sends the music out. I'm hearing it in real time, but as far as what the music in your system plays and it sends it to the listeners on zoom or whatever. Um, I have to go through OBS. So there's, you know, some discrepancy there. So if I host it on my end, I can, I can figure it out and get the latency down. But I literally, mm -hmm. I've been asked to do conferences, even Gil, Gil and them's conference. They wanted me to come on and some other, um, podcast and, and stuff they wanted me to come on and perform but i haven't been able to because of that if i was just sitting here playing guitar and singing without a, a track coming through the system it'd be different now i could play it on speakers behind me but you're just getting you're not getting the the ump for the music you're just kind of right. getting a little bit of reverb in there with it too and whatever picks up on the microphone so right. as far as online performances uh i haven't i haven't really been doing anymore okay <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted to touch on some of the other things you said. There was so much there of of just like for the first thought that sprang up, sprang to my mind. Getting back to faith, uh, the the scripture faith expressing itself through love came through, mm -hmm. and and how how beautiful is that? And if we could embrace, I'm reading this book right now where this man he's visiting South African uh, church, and uh, this this drunk witch doctor wearing a loincloth walks up, you know, with his little Rafiki staff, you know, and, and he just feels the father's heart for this man. And he goes over there and just embraces him. The man just starts sobbing and sobbing. And, and he actually speaks in, speaks in fluid English, which I'm not even sure he spoke English. So he's like speaking in tongues mm -hmm. for him, you know, to, to communicate with this, this brother. And prior to him going over there, there's people in the church says, no, don't go over there. Don't, yeah. we don't have anything to do with him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and, and he, he was sent over there with the message from father. You are welcome here. You are embraced in this community. You have a home with us. We love you. You know, so, speaking on behalf of father. Now, a lot of the people in the church did not agree with father about that. And unfortunately that's, that's been the case in the church. And I, and I'm sorry to say, that's why a lot of churches are going to be closing their doors. Cause it's like, the move of God, if they're not tracking with the move of God, and it's all about love and faith expressing itself through love and acceptance and no judgment. That was actually one thing that was on my heart to talk about with you today, about judge not lest you be judged. With the same judgment you use, it will be returned unto you, meted out to you, as, as I think the King James says. Yeah. Um, again, like, you know, I was definitely told that even early on, um, when we started, I was doing Christian rap in the bars, mm -hmm. man, we, uh, we were leading worship in a bar room and people are in there crying. Cool. Like people just went out to drink and came out to see their friends and, and they know people that were performing with me and, and they're in the back weeping as we just usher in the presence of the Holy spirit and, and just reckless abandon on stage. Is like, and trust me, we got all those eyes and looks and y'all don't have no business going there. And, and this was from the churches. It really wasn't from the, you know, the club goers, you know, obviously if you're too preachy and put the drink down and repent, turn to Jesus, like you're going to, there's going to be some animosity. But if you're in there, just, you know, we're ushering the presence of the Holy Spirit, share our story, share our experiences through music and, and you know what I'm saying? Let the music do what it do. And, you know, we I'd share a little bit. I just, I wasn't like telling people to repent and, you know, as far as like being abrasive with it, like, you know, we understand what repentance is. It's, it's something very beautiful and, and God's grace allows us to change and, and it's still it's continually working on us. So with that in mind, you know, we totally caught a lot of flack early on going out to those club scenes and didn't, for the most part, I didn't get a lot of people who came to support until I started going to a biker church. Uh, I started going to a biker church and I told them, hey, I'm going to be performing at this bar. And uh, if you guys are welcome to come and support, 
listen, they, dude, you just hear Harleys rumbling down the road. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. They all, all these bikers with beards, they look scruff, dude. They're covered in tattoos and mohawks and stuff. And all these bikers get off, but they're all, they are, are like madly in love with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like they're like Christian hardcore bikers and they would all come out and support me. And it would be cool to, to be performing at a, ch even at a church or something. And you just hear the rumbling of these Harleys coming. And hey, we we come here to support Truth Seeker. So my pastor, uh, who was a, a Christian Christian biker at the time, uh, I did get a lot of support from him. But they were a counterculture, right? There's a biker church. Um, if it's one biker who goes to a church, you kind of stand out as the guy wearing leather and you know your your um, your vest and patches and all that stuff and got your helmet. You kind of stand out, but. When you go to a whole church of Christian bikers, there's a, there's a subculture and they would embrace people with mohawks and tattoos and piercings and uh, prostitutes and drug addicts and homeless people. You know what I'm saying? They went to those people. Um, and so, again, those subcultures, man, that, that God is using a Christian biker movement is a huge movement. Wonderful. I just picked up a, a bike myself. Uh honda magna 1100 cc's at the fastest bike of its day <laughs> 1986 you know oh my goodness so um that's fun maybe i should join a biker church you, you know i woke up thinking to myself um i was gonna make make a video now i'm not literally gonna do this probably <laughs> but like you know you have a lot of ideas yeah, yeah. right you just like the reasons why I left the Christian church, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that was the idea. That was the thought that came to me. And it's like, you know, like I don't feel accepted and I'm like a full blown Jesus lover, you know, uh, you know, just because of like theological points. I mean, we can like slice and dice this thing to where no one's welcome. If that's the way we choose to go. And most, you know, like a lot do choose to go that way though. I know. I would have. So I, I would talk to Christian brothers, and they would like put me through an interview. Like I'd meet them, and I feel like I'm being interrogated. So, what yeah. do you believe about the Trinity? Is Jesus God, or is He the Son of God? And there's like all these trick questions, and I'm like, oh, dude. I'm like, okay, I believe that Jesus is is the Son of God. You're wrong. Jesus is God <sighs> in the flesh. I'm sorry. I don't believe that he that God left His throne and He wasn't in heaven anymore and came to Earth. Like, who was Jesus praying to? Listen, you're deceived, and we can't. We can't fellowship together. I was like, oh, wow, this is weird. This is very weird. And this happened on more than one occasion with Christians trying to like pick you apart because eventually you're going to find something that you disagree with eventually. So I, I don't even ask those questions anymore. I try to find what we can agree, agree on. And I just maybe know that by either researching them or listening to them or partaking of their fruit, which I can agree on your fruit for sure. Any good fruit. I love all kinds of fruit. Right. And I can partake of your fruit. And um, and I try to find that now. And I and it it's I love it. It's made me more um, uh, loving, acceptable and just trying to like focus on what's good in your life and we can let's double down on what's good let's double down on what we agree on forget what we don't agree on as long as you, we're not going to fight each other over like the things that we don't agree on which you have that you know th th that's those people who are like trying to do like fruit inspectors and oh i don't want this no you're, you're this and that so um and i see a lot more of that <sighs> but i think both sides are turned up right now you know, of what like sets us apart. And who do you think Trump is? Did God send Trump or did God send Biden? Like, oh Lord, who are you? You know, these weird questions, like as that kind of stuff's turned up, the the other side of the the love and the acceptance, definitely in, in the in the mystical movement, we've kind of put aside a lot of differences. Some people are still in the middle, but I champion Christ in our diversity, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I I we know that we have differences, but we throw them aside for the sake of Christ, the things that we can agree on and walk in that. And I mean, this has been a couple of years for me now, but it just brings me to tears to see the beauty in our diversity. Because usually again, you know, I come from the movement where you're disqualified by if you believe anything different. And so now we, I look at Gil and Berlin and Martin and Karina, and I mean, just so many other people coming in, but those are some of my friends. And we have so much that we disagree on or what sets us different or whatever, but I see the beauty of Christ in diversity of a body that is diverse with arms, legs, eyes, we're all different, we're, but we serve a function where we can look at each other and say, oh, I see your function, man. 
I don't agree with everything, but I see you, man. I know what you're doing. I see you. And that takes a lot of humility. It takes being able to, uh, you know, just be able to honor somebody where they are not try to change somebody, you know, but it's, it's beautiful. And I do champion that in this Christian mystical movement. Yeah. Um, unity in diversity and unity. I mean, like I see this as like honoring one another and celebrating one another, Yeah. even if you do disagree, because honestly, like if there's disagreements, it's meant to challenge and provoke a love for the truth. And you don't have to hate the one who challenged you. You, they don't have, you don't have to view them as your enemy. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. You brought, brought up a very uh, a considerable point for me to consider and to, yeah. to treasure Really? Yeah, but, but to like not be your friend and excommunicate you, like right. that's different, you know? Yeah, because I, I mean, like I've been at church meetings even recently where I said some things because I'm kind of an outspoken person. I said some things that I sensed, uh, I think most of the people in here probably disagree with my perspective on this. And then I, then I thought, am I, am I good for them? So out of love for them, I would like retreat to my golem cave. I'll, I'll go outside the walls of this church. If, you know, if like, if I'm not actually blessing and benefiting the people here me out of love i'll step back you know yeah kind of kind of thing and i think that's where some people are like i don't want to i don't want to cause yeah. unnecessary I, strife or division yeah or yeah pain and, with and it's on it's on your heart to talk about those things though the things that you feel the things that you're into like you're looking for people that you can share these ideas with and and, and hear about their experiences right but obviously they weren't in that fellowship at that time or, or whatever. So I kind of did the same thing. You know, um, I would go online, just like you go online, you create a podcast, you create dialogue online with the world. Hey, who is into this? I want to interview. I want to have a conversation with you. Who is open to, to talk about this? And um, so you, you do self censor, you hold yourself back, you know, mm -hmm. and I, th I think there's wisdom in that no matter where you are, you know, because you have some of those people who that's all they can talk about even like on the job space you know they can't really you know they all they're on the job just talking about jesus the whole time and like there would be times where i'm like i try to like watch sports a little bit on the job because i'm like i need to be able to like at least you know hey man how about them cowboys or something you know monday morning or whatever i ain't got to come back man you know the holy spirit showed up last night in our service and they're like what are you talking about man you know what i'm saying to be like be all things to all men so that when the opportunity is right, we can win some. And so, um, yeah, I, I didn't yeah. talk a lot about the things that I was studying or was into in Bible studies or at church and stuff like that. As far as like the deep far out stuff, I created a podcast and found people who were into that stuff to talk about it with. I'm not like trying to force like, right. Hey, you know, Orion is a gateway to the heavens, man. And in and, and heaven, uh, new Jerusalem is going to descend out of Orion and new stars are being formed out of the Orion horsehead nebula. Like I wasn't going to churches and doing that. Oh, I was on podcasts doing that. And people uh -huh. were like, Oh yeah, I've, I've studied that. And little pieces here and there, here and there versus like trying to force, so we self-censor, but I think, yeah. you know, it's, it, it was healthy to do that. You know, I do love the constellation Orion. It just moves me. <laughs> There's yeah. a special connection I have to Orion for real. Mm -hmm. I, I even like had this oh, yeah. dream one night where I'm flying out in space. And I was going to the nearest star and I'm like, no, let's redirect. Okay. Let's try Let's travel out to Betelgeuse, yeah. which is the, the part of the shoulder, yep. the 640 light years away, something like that. And on a huge star that's about to perhaps explode, you know, explode. Orion is, is special, man. I always feel drawn to it. I don't know, maybe it's, it's you know, in the, uh, in the winter, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, dominant in, in the night sky. It just lights up really bright. I've seen beautiful, um, I've seen what, you know, we call angels or whatever traveling in and out of Orion. And there's mm. just been a lot of research. Wow. Um, I'll tell you something that's interesting that look up, I believe it's um, was it Michelangelo who who did the painting on the 16th chapel chapel at the top of of uh, I think uh, God and Adam or whatever touch of Michelangelo or sounds good to me. <laughs> I it was know. either him or Leonardo, one, one of them. But um, you, there's a guy did the, the study. He took uh, a picture of of the Orion Horsehead Nebula, which is the nebula that is formed around o Orion, mm -hmm. um, and it if you lay it on top of that painting it fits perfectly of 
um, the uh, Orion Horsehead Nebula. There was a lot, the ancients really venerated Orion yeah. as well. I've wow. seen some beautiful stuff. I wrote about it in my book a little bit. Cool. Um, Ellen, Ellen G. White from the Seventh-day Adventist Church really spoke highly of it. She had visions of, of, of the, and she's the one who actually, you know, was vocal about the saying that the new Jerusalem would come out of Orion. And then you do research and see how like literally Orion is birthing new stars and, th and things are being formed out of Orion and going out into the solar system. So um, I've seen things go in and out of it, man, literally in the night sky, like mm -hmm. just like mind blown, like with my, you know what I'm saying? Physical eyes, not in my heart, not in with my eyes closed, but eyes open open-eyed not even visions like literally seen them yeah um, go into yeah. or the orion nebula there's something to it for sure interesting it's mentioned three times in scripture too and um there's a lot of i, I guess myths and folklore and and whatnot i mean how, what to make of that i mean i'm sure i'm sure on some level god honors that because it's part of our conscious makeup of of the stories we have about it so there's probably something to looking into that as well yeah the ones that are mentioned for sure and and using them you know i guess even with the allegory of the bear which is mentioned um you know yes. in, in scripture and the, uh, the pleiades which is you know you can see that yeah. as well next to orion the the cluster, the little blur that you see in the night sky, which is the seven sisters or I once, Christ, I once, yeah, I once Christ holds the seven like the, stars within his hands, you know, yeah, like the, the womb of the universe or something like the, the, I think I used the word vagina, <laughs> the, the vagina of the universe or the, cause it's like, it's like a gateway to all kinds of galaxies through that, through the Pleiadian yeah. portal, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing, but yeah it's it's deep and we definitely have a connection with the stars i mean we are created from stardust like you know what i'm saying so yes um, and of course we have family in in a lot across the universe you know uh, and and in other universes so that's a yeah topic i believe perhaps it too, man. for another congress another time but yeah i mean you know i don't the weird thing about it is you know we can talk about it and build awe and wonder in our experiences but to, it's hard to speak on this as an expert because there's still so much that's just unknown or forgotten exactly. uh, by us you know that's why i say i'm i'm just a fellow journeyer Sure, I've done some research. I may know some things you don't, but it's not even yeah. about us knowing things. It's about us loving each other, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day and enjoying each other and enjoying relationship. And one th one way we can do that is through conversation yeah, and just like swapping ideas and thoughts. And that's part of relationship and mm -hmm. just part of how- But you ever are. talk to somebody where even we're having this conversation and then like you you take it to the next level and you're like oh i just lost them like even what you were just saying oh, like yeah. we're talking about orion and how it's so beautiful then you're like yeah we have brothers and sisters out there in the universe I thought, oh god oh what's he talking about you know like some people <laughs> are like tuning that's kind of weird man what is he like i've been there like people who um they try to be deep they're like yeah man i know about the illuminati man and, and symbolism and blah, blah blah and they're just like kind of raising the bar and i kind of like I don't try to, but I trump them. I'm like, oh yeah, have you heard of this in the Bible where it says it? And I just be like, ah oh, man. And they get weird and like they don't they don't talk to me no more. And that was oh, one man. of the reasons why I, like, I kind of learned to self-censor. Cause you're yeah. fine. They're like, yeah, man, Orion's dope, dude. Orion, yeah, there's you know, there's things in and out of Orion and it's in the Bible and it's here and there, and God created it for a reason. Yeah, man, there's beings that travel in and out of it. What the hell? What did you <laughs> And they'll never talk to you again because of it. You know, you think you have common ground because yeah, I'm into Orion too. I got it tattooed on my arm, man. Oh, you nice. know, and, and then it's like, oh, there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it certainly happened. Like I, I was actually interviewing somebody just uh, yesterday. Um, it was a really amazing interview, but then I mentioned something and I'm like, uh oh, I don't think he's on board with that idea. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I mean that's part of exploration oh, and conversation, though. Like, I know, and I wanted I wanted to share just this thought with you that's been so helpful to me, because really, you know, at the end of the day, it's about relationship with God, relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus, the one who is truth with a capital T, you know, and who the Spirit of Truth who's leading us into all truth, and so this is a way. Once we we know that we're in relationship with Him, we're we're on this trajectory as far apart as we are in our thinking currently we're on our way to be united in Christ and see it, see it from every angle anyway, 
You know, that's what that's what the whole diversity is about. You could we get to see things from different perspective. Yeah. What about this? You know, like it reminds me of that movie World War Z with the Israeli council, you know, of of like there's one guy who's always like the opposite of everything that they that they say. That, that I always take that perspective of, of different from you on purpose. Like we're not we're not all in agreement because we have to honor this other perspective, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and how life it, is. It, yeah, to be it takes um, humility to be able to do that and put yourself in their shoes, and yeah. um, to truly and understand. Things changed for me, dude, and it didn't start off, you know, with with spiritual stuff like that. It started off as like honestly for me, I, I watched Fahrenheit nine eleven. Uh, this was after shoot, this was probably two thousand and six Fahrenheit nine eleven, and it was like it was us invading. Iraq and Afghanistan mm-hmm. from their perspective. Like I, I yeah. seen it from their perspective. Like we were ransacking homes and looking for a, an invisible enemy that mm-hmm. we created. And there was these innocent people, but to, to the Americans, those are bad guys. Like those were, those are people who want to do us harm and we got to go in. So that's like the right, yeah, go in their house, go. Yeah. Grab their kids, throw their kids around. Yeah. Yeah. You can put your hands on their wife and tie, tie their wife up in a corner. It's like, Oh, wow these are innocent people like this is that's me like what if what if china invaded us and they're kicking our door in at two in the morning thinking that we are part of a terrorist organization like for for some reason when i watched that from that perspective it changed things for me because i put myself in their shoes i'm like wow would i want that to happen to me what if it did and so it started with a like a you know what I'm saying political thing. It started with, you know, uh, the war, uh, but then it kind of moved into me being able to put myself in other people's shoes. You hear the term "walk a mile in their shoes," yeah. and so whether it's a homeless person, whether it's a Seventh Day Adventist, whether it's someone who, you know, believe a radical whatever Christian or Muslim or whatever. And I'm like, okay, they were taught this from, from childhood, that this was okay, that this was their norm, that God would judge them if they left the faith. And you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to understand the psychology behind why you believe what you believe. And so that would open up for a lot more uh, conversations, you know, and, um, and acceptance and uh, just, uh, you know, loving people where they were. But things shifted when I put myself in someone else's shoes and try to see things from their perspective. And, uh, yeah. and there's a lot of humility and wisdom in that if we would do that. I, I actually did that recently with, with the whole, you know, if pe- for people who believe they're homosexual, you know, like to really try to understand that, to mm-hmm. really try to gain empathy. Me too. Yeah. That, and, and really, uh, it was beautiful what I came away with, though. At yeah, the end me too. Of it. It was about like, would you would you come away with? Tell me. Yeah, Let's all of can, us. Oh, I wonder if every, we're similar. <laughs> every man has this longing for mm-hmm. an intimate relationship with another man. I believe mm-hmm. this. Like a David and Jonathan, we see this picture of Jesus and John, for instance. We'll go mm-hmm. with that example because we know they didn't have sex yeah. <laughs> for sure. Jesus and John, the purest example of like a brotherly love that's so deep, that's so laid his head on his bosom or whatever. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Laying his head on his bosom, like I, I love you, I love you, you know. And and we're like scared of that kind of intimacy. And well, so they would greet each other with the kiss. <laughs> even that, we're so far removed from. <laughs> yeah, and and see, I think that even the Jewish culture set up a society that was so pure through the law that this was acceptable man and man can walk hand in hand you know just down the street and it's nothing but plutonic but pure love you know that that an intimacy that they shared has nothing to do with the sexual are you kidding me no (laughs) well a lot a lot of a, a lot of gay men will tell you that you know that it has nothing to do with sex it's nothing to do like it is about being held by a man. I mean, there's so many different, re- you know, reasons that people would tell you. So you can't, you know, you can't generalize like all men have daddy issues. All gay men have daddy issues. All men have, all gay men have been molested or whatever. Now there's a lot, a, a, a lot of that for sure. Um, but yeah, you'll talk to a lot of them who say, listen, it's not even sexual. Like I'm yeah. just, and may, maybe they don't identify the daddy issue. Um, I can identify my daddy issue, right? I didn't have a dad. My daddy issue wasn't replaced by, a gay man for me because I'm not I'm not attracted to men, um, but I'm attracted to Father God, mm-hmm. who 
came in and, and, and you know what I'm saying, became a father to me. Um, that, 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 that daddy issue that I had, God said, I become a father unto the fatherless. And literally he became that for me and, and began to teach me like a father would. And even just like lining things up in my life, um, and, and taught me. And so, um, I, I can identify what it's like to, to, to have a daddy issue or even to be hugged by another man, you know what I'm saying? Of, of, mm -hmm. of, of someone who plays a father role. Mm -hmm. Um, even if you, even if you are, a, a, a you know what I'm saying? A, a father, you have a father in your life and they don't show affection like that. Like a lot of that stuff is you're, you're longing for too. Like if you had a father, but he never hugged you, he never mm -hmm. touched you. And so now there's this, this, the, the touch of a man that you, you look for. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's definitely, pre um, um, prevalent in promiscuity among women. And, and that's the big one that, that, that people know, you know, you know what I'm saying? The, the, uh, the, the, the uh, gay issue may be a little bit more taboo for a lot of people, but the young woman who is having multiple partners and looking for her, her identity in another man, usually, or stripper, like it's even a cliche. Oh, she's got daddy issues. Yeah, she's got daddy issues. You can tell, right? And 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 it comes out in other areas of our life if we don't deal with whatever trauma that is and a messed up family situation where the father's not there. Maybe he's even there physically, but he's not there mentally, spiritually, or emotionally. Can can bleed out in other areas of our life for sure. Yeah, I hear you. And we all, I remember being a a, a young man and just even going to music music festivals with you know the church and like i would gravitate towards like an older guy you know i'm like 12 years old and oh there's somebody that's 16 and and, and they're like you know uh like i was looking for something some affirmation or um like do you like me or do you want to <laughs> like just mentor me you know mm -hmm. like and i think that we we all need that physically. Like even that story, going back to the story of my friend, Aaron McKenzie, who was down in uh, Africa and he's, he's hugging this, this really old um, witch doctor guy, you know, and he was being the father to him. And the guy just broke down and wept, you know, like he was fathering him in that yeah. moment and being that embrace and that, you know, drawing him in. Yeah. Bam. It's uh, a, <laughs> it's powerful, man. Um, there's so much to it, but again, like you just going back to the main point, putting yourself in someone else's shoes, right? You know, um, to gain understanding, okay. and that's how you're going to help them. Yeah. You know, I think uh, you're going to long suffer. You're going to walk a long way where you're not just going to like judge them off of face value or surface level. You're going to go the next step and go a little bit deeper and want to know why you're this way. And uh, and if you find out why, you find out the why, then you can help them find you know, that peace and, and, and that acceptance. Maybe they don't need to be plastered in the bliss of God. Maybe they need correction in their life. Maybe they need, you know, maybe there's some other things that, that you can help them with as a believer. You just need to do this, man. Get in the river and drink, bro. You, uh, that's works for you. This guy's got some other issues that obviously, yeah, that God is going to renew you and you need to get in his river. But to make it sound so easy that just get in the river. I, I've, I've met those Christians. Quit focusing on that stuff and just drank of his goodness, man. It's like, yeah, but when it comes time to do life, yeah, when it time exactly. to when it comes time to show up to work on Monday morning, and this guy can't hold down a job, why not? Let's get down to the deep rooted issues. Maybe there's some daddy issues. Maybe there is some, you know, some uh, different issues of stability within their life. You gotta help people, man. We we project on the people. It yeah. worked for me. It can work for you, bro. Not yeah. everybody, man. Yeah, I everybody. I've actually been confronting a lot of those things in my own life. Like I tend to judge people who aren't like me. Yeah, you know, and I and I realized how I was doing that uh, to people I love in my life, you know, and and it made me realize like, no, I can honor you. I, oh, and once I did, all of a sudden this this all this revelation came like, Oh, I see how you see the world. And my goodness, that's father's wisdom. I was neglecting father's wisdom because I wasn't honoring you, you know, and judging you because you weren't like me, you know, and didn't yeah. approach or experience God like me. <laughs> Cause I thought I've my way is the best. <laughs> yeah. I've talked about this a little bit. I read this in a Rick Joyner book a long time ago. And, and but it was a phrase he used and he called it spiritual homosexuality hmm. and it was where 
you only interact with or you're drawn to those who are just like you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm only going to hang with the mystical Christians. I can't hang with street preacher Christians who are just judgment or even non-Christians. Let's just throw that in there. Yeah. Uh, I can't hang with people who don't love Jesus like I love them because we're just incompatible. We don't have nothing in common. So I can't be your friend or whatever. Or you believe in, the, in uh, a literal uh, translation of, of revelation. And I believe in a spiritual or metaphysical, right? And so we just start, we create this echo chamber, which is, happening with the internet and not even in, in a Christian spiritual way, but like political, anything that you're into, you find and add all of these people who are just like telling you that they're, they're like, you know, what I'm saying? echoing whatever you're saying, and they're just saying it back yeah. to you. So you have a bunch of yes men, right? Oh, yeah. and, and, and if you are a street preacher, then you got all these street preacher friends. You don't have any mystical Christian friends because they, they stick oh. out, they challenge you, you don't agree with them, you think they're deceived and vice versa. So Rick Joyner in one of his books, I think it was The Quest, I'm not sure, but he talked about this being a problem within Christendom and he called it spiritual homosexuality. Yeah, people don't like that term because they think, yeah, I guess it goes straight to, to sexuality. But I can see how it's like I only want my own kind around me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I and then because it's uncomfortable, uh, and then especially because there's pain involved mentally with cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. um, we could explore that that phrase because I'm like, well, I would like to explore that phrase, but it reminds me of the time when the, the shack movie came out and mm -hmm. I, I i loved william paul young so much yeah you know and so i would share stuff about it and then then i'd get these people on there like new age yeah, you know like and then just badgering me with all their little comments and yeah. i finally blocked them like but what did i block out i blocked out i just i just said here's the echo chamber i want yeah. Only people who like the shack. Yeah. William Paul Young, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there is oh, no. some, I think uh, there's healthy dialogue and there's healthy disagreements. And then there is like combative where people turn into trolls. Yeah. Every time, like I have people, oh my God, let me just talk about this. I have, a, I have someone who subscribed to my channel and they, I, I knew they had it. I knew somebody was doing it and he finally said it in the comment. This dude's got like eight channels. And I used to go live and I would immediately have eight dislikes. Every time I went live, eight dislikes. Oh, wow. We're not even a minute into the show. And I would even like premiere, like I'm going to like, like set it out. Like we're going live next week and you can have your video up. Eight dislikes. What's come on. This isn't eight people. This is, this gotta be one person. And finally uh, I, I try to like, when they like, you know, hit me with different um, derogatory comments or they won't listen or whatever. A lot of times I'll block trolls, right? Especially if they're disliking your videos, messing the algorithms up, all that stuff. Well, just the other day we had a prayer. I did a, you know, I do Thursday night prayer sessions or whatever online. And it's just like, it, they don't just leave one comment. So it, it'd be different if it was just one comment that said, this is new age, stay away. But it was seven, eight comments all from different different names, but they were all Christian names. The uh -huh. one that God loved, Watchman for the Lord, Jesus is coming soon. Like, and they had pro profile pictures and everything, and it was just boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, okay, did he did they share my video out? And 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 in their in their friends all commented because that happens too. And they're all like these street preachers or really reformed or whatever. Uh -huh. But he he's mentioned in a comment. He says, "If you block me, I have a lot more YouTube channels, and I'm gonna keep coming back." And I'm like, "Oh my God, you're just sitting here like, like this is what you want to do? You want to get on here and troll my videos or try to help the people who are deceived who listen to my message or?" you know, resonate with my work or let me pray for them or whatever the case is. Like, it's so weird to have that mindset, but put yourself in their shoes. What we were just talking about. I'm offended. I don't want you on my channel. I want you to listen because eventually I feel like it'll, it, it will rub off on you. And there's a way that I can kind of approach it with grace. But if you come in here, like disrupt, disrupting what we got, we got going on, like we kind of got to, I think there's wisdom in fixing that, but um, put, put yourself in their shoes. You know, this reminds me of, they believe they're a warrior for the Lord. You know, they're doing, those, they're doing yeah. God's will. Yeah, they, God told them to do that. And and Jesus know? even said, like, there will become a time when people who kill you will think that they're <laughs> serving God by doing yeah. this. And yeah. uh, it reminds me of Paul when he talked about the thorn 
in his, in his flesh. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was a troll like you're describing. <laughs> that was the thorn. God, will you just remove them? You know, no, my yeah. goodness, it's sufficient for you. In yeah. fact, uh, their little, their, your, your little Percy there is doing lots of promo for you. You don't even realize. Yeah, no, listen, that's a good way to look at it because that happens. I got a friend and I, I'll, I'll, I'll call her name. Uh, uh, um, Hodge, what's her, uh, Jenny Hodge with Christ alignment and they get a lot of trolls. And, and, and when I say trolls, these people think that they, they don't think they're trolling. They think they're doing God's will, but they'll comment, you know, all like every comment is a negative derogatory comment. You guys are deceived. You guys need to repent. This is witchcraft. This is new age. They are madly in love with Jesus. They are uh, evangelizing the new age in, in uh, Australia mm-hmm. and they're doing a dang good job at it. But, you know, from the looks of it, the way they look, the way they talk, the lingo, they don't even say Jesus name. They, Cause that's not his name anyway, but they, they, they call him uh, spirit of truth which is his name. Anyway, they get all these derogatory comments and then they get derogatory videos. You know how people, big big YouTubers will do like, let's show you everything wrong with this lady here. These yeah. people are evangelizing the new age. God didn't call us there. They look like the world. You can't become like, so they got all these videos of people going in on them. And for her, she takes us to heart. I mean, we all do. When we, if so, Like if somebody really, did a whole video exposing your flaws and saying you're demonic and going to hell and listen, it's going to mess with you. It just does. Mm-hmm. Um, but she, 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 I feel like it messes with her, but I, I try to encourage her. I say, Jenny, listen, it ain't for them. It, when, when the time comes and these people have a spiritual experience and they need somebody to talk to, they're coming to you. Mm-hmm. Because they know that, that you're well-versed in this stuff. They know that, you know, the, these people are, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, giving you free promotion. Like you just said, yeah. for the thousands of people who were in there, their audience of the other people who were kind of like lashing out when those people have that spiritual awakening, it's going to resonate with somebody. You're not out here for, to get the masses. Mm-hmm. You're out here for the ones. And these people are giving you free promotion all the, the bad naysay stuff that comes with it, but it's about the one, the person who somebody shares it trying to dig, but they're like, Hey, like, I feel like God speaks to me through that way. Or I feel like I hear the voice of the Holy spirit in the middle of the night. And she's got a story about it. And she tells it, teaches us how to engage it a little deeper. So you're getting free publicity from it whenever they go in on you too. So it, it definitely works both ways. Yeah, whenever I'm in need of a new uh, mentor or spiritual encourager, I just look look for uh, look at uh, WatchmanForTheLord.com and just scroll down the list and try them out. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Well, they, I mean, all, well, funny. <laughs> those people call themselves watchmen, and maybe we I used know. to. I know I used to. I'm a watchman for the Lord. If I don't blow the trumpet, then the blood is on my head. No, you yeah, know, so we got to go and tell you everything you're wrong that you got wrong back there. You know. And maybe if I don't tell have, you, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah, maybe so they, they their, think they're their, doing a work yeah. for the Lord. And they don't and, tell you. And they're still part of the body too. The body needs an a-hole to, to you know. <laughs> yep. You're right. You're right though. But I mean, for you to look at that, for me to look at that, because I have sorry. found. It's, no, it's it's true okay. though. I mean, they, they would say the same thing about us. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But um, no, maybe not. They wouldn't even call us part of the body. We'll say that. Now, those are the, those are the ones even, but we still love them. You know what I'm saying? We still honor them. Um, even though that they would say you're a, a sinner in need of a savior and, and you're madly in love with Jesus while well, you have, you serve another Jesus. They'll look up ways and yeah. all that and prove it scripturally that you're not a believer or whatever. But for us, even though they believe that about us to say, you know what? I honor you and, and you're bringing balance to the force. You're bringing yeah. balance to this thing. And Bring, I talked with a good, I talked with a, a friend of mine and listen, yeah. I appreciate them. Like, I, I think it's weird to think that our brand of Christianity, if we wanted to like put it on all the Christians, I think it would be weird. I think mm-hmm. it would be weird to have all the Christians like doing ascensions every Friday night and all of them are lost in the spirit. Well, I talked to King David, man. King David told me there's a revelation coming for everybody. Like what if every Christian was doing that? 
Mm -hmm. Like I see balance in the diversity, going back to what we just said, the diversity of the person on the street corner. There's a dude at the Capitol wearing sackcloth and ashes crying out for the nation. Listen, I'm not going to do that. There was a point in time where I did and I would. Listen, we wore sackcloth and all that. I did that. But I, I, I know where he's coming from. Because he reads the scripture. He believes that this is the last days. I honor him. I don't agree with everything, but I honor how much he loves the Lord that he will go out and do that. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, he's not causing harm. Thankfully, uh, at least physical harm. Um, and I can honor that. I, I, and, I, and I say that about the ascension. I make fun of our, our movements. But <laughs> let's, let's make fun of the street preachers too. What if every Christian, because if you, if you let them tell it, they want everybody to do what they're doing. They're trying to recreate themselves and other people. Uh -huh. They want all of us street preaching. How weird or insane would it look for every street corner in America to have a Christian out there preaching? Like that's their goal, brother. Mm -hmm. You got to get out there and tell the world, get out there on the, the Bible says, go into the highways, into the byways, let them know the error of their way. Like they want us on, they want all of us on street corners preaching mm. repentance and holding signs. God hates fags or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And wouldn't that be a really weird Christianity to have everybody doing exactly the same thing or there'd be no evangelism? Everyone was a pastor. Everyone started their own church. Um, the God is in the diversity of the street preacher, of the worship leader, of the person doing ascensions and, and, and leading groups in, into that stuff. And yeah, my even mother. the ones we don't even, I think, man, even Catholicism, man, like the, yeah. the thing that the stuff you don't even agree with, I think God is yeah, in there exactly. and people are encountering God there. Um, so I appreciate the diversity and, and I don't try to win them over because back in the day i'm trying to get you out of that into what i'm doing hey man you don't got to be a street preacher no more listen you're being mean to people like you know you don't have to be a catholic listen you're deceived there's some things you need to know come into our church man let me pray for you mm. right and we're oh just trying gosh. to win all these people out of what they're doing but and, and maybe it's passive you know what i'm saying that i'm just hey you just do, do what you do but listen god is your, is the ultimate teacher the holy spirit is going to lead you and guide you in all truth and as far as i'm concerned the street preacher has to be out there for that season. There's things that he's learning. There's things that God is going to teach him that he's only going to learn what it's like on a street corner, yelling at the top of his lungs every night. And, and there's things that me and you might not get, but I think mm -hmm. it's valuable to the body. The fact, I wish that they all could see diversity like that and honor everyone where they are. I definitely do. Even if I disagree with them, even if they make me mad, I know that they're doing, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They think that they are honoring God by leaving a dirty comment. You go into hell, brother, get your life right. You're like, oh, that's weird. We're doing a prayer session, you know? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, so many thoughts. <laughs> what to choose from. This is, a, this is an amazing conversation because really the scripture says, and this is the God's like throwing down the gauntlet, like honor all men. Yes. Know? honor all men speak wow. evil of no man yeah judge nothing the before says. the time too and with the same judgment you use it will be judged you will be judged i mean hey. this, is, this was what i woke up with like yeah. this was like this was a theme i wanted to bring into this conversation for yeah. all our listeners too honor all men judge not lest you be judged who are you to judge another man's servant that's one of my favorites ones mm. um, you know to his own master he stands and falls and god is able to make him stand like, oh, okay. Mm. All right. Make that street preacher ch stand. Even though I, I, you know, I have had the thought that he's the one serving the wrong Jesus. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I think we all do, but you know, you see them, but they stay thinking about us though. And that's the thing that put myself in their shoes. Oh, well, they think we're deceived. They think we're bringing witchcraft into the church. They think that we're playing with, what do they call it? False fire, you know, or yeah. you know what I'm saying? foreign fire. We're burning mm altars of incense on foreign god you know we're mixing the holy and profane brother you're mixing the holy and profane you got new age symbolism behind you and you got a statue of jesus and and then you're talking about the bible like you know i've been there though and no and, and that's what helps me because i've been around uh, the block as far as well, like see. thinking that i uh you know have it figured out and what i find out the more the more i, I journey is that i don't and I just figure out what works for me and what I do very well. And, um, and I do it and, uh, I'm just honoring people, man. 
Yeah, honoring. Might not agree with them. I don't have to agree with them, but I I understand why you're doing it, man. I understand why you left me that dirty comment. I understand why you get up at, you know, 12 o'clock midnight to go out and preach at the clubs. I did it. And I thought I was honoring God. I thought that that's what looked most biblical, you know? Yeah. And to be fair, there are the spirit of the Antichrist. There are demonic beings posing as Jesus. And you can get mixed up in that. I firmly believe I was. I was deceived by a, a false version of Jesus for a lot of years and it kept me in, in, in bondage. Mm-hmm. And I, and this is why I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, there's a huge part of me that's like anti-religious just because of that whole, whole yeah. oppressive, the most yeah, oppressive you times think it, You think life. that it could have just been in like an aspect of Jesus, like a certain, you know, standpoint well, of view that is there because i do be, like as much yeah. as i'm a grace person i'm a judgment person too you may not hear yeah. me talk about that and convicting of is, sin yeah i think the whole spectrum but we have a different like i'm viewing them from over here this this year you know this seven years but now i have a, a bigger picture it's okay there's more to the story there are more to right. this this aspect of jesus or or god right. or whatever like yeah, versus think, having to throw it all out kind of thing. But I don't know exactly what, what you were into. So Yeah. Well, we, we tend to forget uh, certain things. You know, if we're not immersed in like the wholesomeness of the entirety of scripture. Yeah. Because there's a certain yeah, yeah. wholesomeness that comes to your faith when you immerse yourself in all of scripture. When you read mm-hmm. through it all once a year, you know, on a consistent basis. Like, like I, I read Psalm 84 in the Passion Translation this morning, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is talking about experiencing these intimacies with God that I haven't really tapped into yet. And I'm like, oh, I was just focusing on this and that because I haven't read my Bible in a long time, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and this brings a holistic view to it. But, but honestly, like, the, the way Jesus talked, like it wasn't just, he didn't just preach law. He preached the law on steroids, you know, in Matthew five, five through seven, mm-hmm. you know, like to, to really, to really drive the point home of the purpose of the law. And it was to expose and to eradicate all our self-righteousness to leave mm-hmm. us in a humble state where he could say, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's how he started out that sermon. And then yeah. he delved into all this law stuff that like, oh my gosh, I'm convicted. I looked at a woman with lust. Oh my gosh, I hated someone in my heart. That's like it's the same as murder and killing them. Oh my gosh, I haven't been careful with my words. That condemns me too. You know, like, like all this stuff. But Jesus, at the end of the day, he says, every word that Father God gave me to speak to you leads you to eternal life. And some of them are like goads, you know, how Solomon said, they're goads that prod the cattle toward the kingdom of heaven, mm-hmm. ultimately. And even the hardest words, yeah, give me a big goad. I, do I need a big spanking? Send me a thorn in the flesh if that's what you think I need. You know, like he raised up an enemy for Solomon because Solomon was getting too big for his britches or something, you know, like he raised up an enemy to, to, to be that thorn in his side. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm mindful of that. And just at the whole point is yeah, humility. It, humility is our best friend. Humility is the way forward. Into- yeah, we all have the ability to play the Satan, if you will, the adversary. Um, and we think that that's maybe spirits or people we disagree with. But like, literally, you have the you, like, you're going to play that role in somebody else's life, too. You're going to be, you know, that thorn in the flesh. Like, we like, you know, so even reading that you're projecting that on other people. This this guy was a thorn in my flesh uh, yeah. for years. And he he got now. What about you being a thorn in somebody else's flesh? I know. <laughs> like, I you never I thought know about I that. Have been. I to my mother in law, to my own mother. Yeah. Yes, I've been a thorn <laughs> in their flesh. The nagging Jesus dude has been a thorn in my flesh, you know. Um, but like, you know, everything comes full circle, I believe. And um putting ourselves in, in other people's shoes, and even like some of those scriptures we just read, we, we project, you know. Um, of the ones like, you know, speak evil of no man. I remember when I first read that as I was going through a spiritual awake, maybe I've read it before and it just didn't register. But when I was going through this awakening of like more acceptance and more loving and less preaching or trying to get you to conform or whatever, like, it was a listen, speak evil of no man. I'm like, God, that's like, 
man, that's eighty percent of my ministry. I'm a watchman. I'm speaking evil of all these ministries. I'm speaking evil of Kenneth Copeland. I'm speaking evil of Billy Graham and 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 all the whoever. Like I'm speaking evil of all these people. And then the other scripture says, like, if possible, seek peace with all men, if possible. And then that was when I've seen the coexist thing. Mm. Man, that that sounds like we're supposed to coexist with people at possible, if possible, seek peace with all men. That's coexist with everyone, with all religions, with all differences and stuff. And we read those scriptures and they, and they mean a lot to us. Um, but then those other people would, because we know that the opposites in there too: reprove, rebuke, call out their names. Uh, you know, if they're getting too big, sometimes like Paul would call people's names out and, you know what I'm saying? Mark them amongst you that cause division. Like there are these aggressive scriptures. So just yeah. live peacefully with everyone, man. Like that's not the fullness. There is a little bit of it all. And I think that, Maybe the street preacher or the the one who is just more like you know into in into the more uh, you know devout or judgmental Christian like they would project that we don't know those other scriptures. Well, you know the scripture says to call someone out when they do wrong and call. Listen, I know, I know that all of this works cohesively together, and there there may be times to do that. And you know, you, and first of all, it goes back to the beginning. Whatever you're gonna do. It's going to be measured down and given back to you. Judge not lest ye be judged. It's going to come back. So with you out there judging people, get ready for judgment, get ready for scrutiny. But I think people wear that as a badge of honor. Go ahead and judge me. I'm, I'm doing, I'm not sinning. I'm doing, I'm living good for God. And hmm. listen, That's, like they'll, they'll yeah. find, you know, pride cometh before a fall. Yeah. And there are uh, there are things that happen. And there's people who, who, like you said, God raises up to, uh, to trip you. Because God doesn't leave his throne and come down and trip you. He sends a circumstance. He sends a situation uh, your way that uh, that brings that stuff out of you. Mm -hmm. There was a time when I didn't want, I sought war with all men. I knew the scriptures that God didn't come to bring. Jesus didn't come to bring peace, but a sword and turn father against mother. And we're not supposed to listen. I know those scriptures. I used to write them down and study them. And, but now um, I, I see the bigger picture. And indefinitely, there are that that scripture is true. Like if you like for the namesake of Christ and righteousness and justice that goes against the culture, you're going to you're going to be at war, you know, with, with with people in your family members for for abandoning the faith of whatever they practiced at that time or, uh, you know, whatever. So everything everything works out for the good of those who, who love God. And, uh, and I honor those people, man. I really do. And I, 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 I hope and wish that they would, they don't though. They, they don't. And maybe that's a projection, but I haven't seen many who, who would uh, honor what we have going on that are outside of what we're doing. But I do, I say I a hundred percent, whether I agree with you or not, whether I think you're hurting people, listen, I honor you. And I know that you're being true to, your convictions and you have to be though like you have yeah. to go out there at 12 o'clock and preach i knew a guy uh he's he's passed away but he was a street preacher and he would go out to empty parking lots man and he'd set up his loudspeaker and he'd preach and he'd be out there for hours and like he's teaching bible studies and he's singing songs and like there's not a lot of people listening if anybody and it's like and he seemed like a crazy person <laughs> listen man like that's his conviction, dude. He thinks that he has a seat in heaven because he's doing that. Um, obviously, your seat in heaven isn't conditioned upon what you do, because if that's the case, then none of us deserve it. But, you know, when people have their own convictions and, 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 and they do those things and we don't agree with them and we think it's extreme. I was there. I was a street preacher. I got up 12 o'clock and stayed out to four in the morning preaching at the bar rooms and or outside. And we seen so much cool stuff. And, and God taught me a lot while we were there. I wouldn't be caught dead doing that today. Me. That's not where, where God's sending me. I think, I, you know, there's there's better ways to do it. There's more powerful, and effect, effective ways they would disagree with that because the Bible says to go out into the highways and, and byways and preach and hold up a sign and raise your voice really loud, like a trumpet. Um, and they take that literal and they go out and do that. But I think that, you know, that for what we're doing, even with this talk, we're being effective in the internet, super highways and byways. Cause this is, this is where the people are where that old man is going out and nobody's listening to him. Maybe he could have started a podcast. Maybe he could have affected more people. Uh, he could have did it differently. We all could, but 
He's just being true to his convictions. And that when, when I tell you, when God says to do something, you have to do it um, mm-hmm. in your own head, you know, and there's people, we get into trouble because, you know, we even project that, like, what is God telling me to do something? Well, God told me to come and rebuke you, or God told me to give you a prophetic word. And we know that's way off the mark, but in their head, they're being true to what they believe God is telling them from reading the scriptures, from the movies they watch, from life circumstances and this idea of what God is. And you have to be true to that, even if it is on a street corner, knocking on windows, repent. You're like, listen, this is what you, this is the the vision of what you think Christianity looks like and you're honoring it. You're not going to listen to me unless God reveals it to you, or at least what we call God reveals it to you, you know? And so there are levels to all of this stuff. And so I honor, I don't project, I may not agree with it, but Hey man, like, you know, you think you're doing good and I, I appreciate, I appreciate what you're doing, I guess. Yeah. As long as you're not hurting anybody, like physically you might hurt somebody's feelings, <laughs> hurts my feelings when you leave those comments, you well, know, yeah. but it's well, part life, of it. life and death are in the power of the tongue, right? Yeah. So our words do carry weight and power. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I look at that, I'm like, well, a certain aspect of, of God there is judging me <laughs> in his, <laughs> maybe in their blindness or whatever, but it's allowed by God to happen, you know, like, uh, okay, what's the purpose? And I always look, look at that, like, Lord, what are you refining in me by that happening to me through that circumstance? Because yeah. mm-hmm. it's all about building my our character for everything he's got for us to do in this life and beyond the diversity humility is the way forward humility is our best friend you know in all of this yeah i mean the even in of jesus right even in the i mean i just did a video the other day and it was people just thought it was so outside of my character that that trump video and the prophets lied to you i did that video so many people got mad so many got people got offended i've i usually keep that stuff to myself i don't talk a lot about that stuff anymore or try to bring correction to the body of christ or or you missed it i don't want to kick anyone when they're down for sure Uh, because i know that when i'm down somebody's going to kick the piss out of me and i don't want that so whatever you put out is coming back so but to bring a loving rebuke and gentle correction, um, even that video, people, they're like, hey, man, what are you doing judging people? What are you doing giving your opinion on this? You don't know that these people missed the mark. This stuff could still happen, Trump. And then seeing all the different stuff that I think is dangerous that uh, is going on in, in the body of Christ with delusions. I did a video on it. I usually uh-huh. don't. Um, I felt the, the Lord was giving me all this stuff to speak on, and I had to get it off my chest, whether I just did it and didn't release it. I don't know, but I, I felt led to do it. Right. Um, but, you know, there is a, you know, people think that we're only grace guys or we're only, we let anything fly. Listen, I let a lot of stuff fly, weird stuff fly. We all do, but there are, there are a time where we have to, we have to stand up and say, Hey man, that's, that's not cool, man. Like, what do y'all, what's you know, going on? There's, there's a scripture that comes to mind about when there's a certain time frame and i'm not sure if this is historical or the future that this is prophesied about but like they'll say are you a prophet no 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 i'm not a prophet uh i'm a i'm a i'm a farmer you know and and then the, and then they're like well, what are those wounds on you because like prophets are what were marked with wounds or something you know like oh you know i got this in the house of my friend like this is a scripture verse right okay and it's about it's about prophets like it's so unpopular to be a prophet because they're coming after you to kill you because of whatever because you because maybe they caused some harm or something in the world like mm-hmm. what if the prophecies caused a civil war you know and blood is shed and and there's this thing and people would hate those prophets for perpetrating that kind of deal that was a thought that crossed my mind here's another thought and uh, uh, that that i do believe because i i've tracked with a couple of these I do believe that God spoke to them and revealed something about Trump to them. And I, and, and basically like, uh, I would say told them what they were told for a purpose and revealed and was shown something that they were shown for a purpose in the same way. And basically uh, lied to them as much as he lied to Jonah when he said, Hey, go and declare in 40 days time, this is going to happen. 
you know, when really, uh, I think Jonah, he had egg on his face at the end of the day, and so do these prophets, <laughs> but, but they were, they were sent and they were, and they proclaimed yeah. their message faithfully, you know, and so you can't fault them as much, as much as you can, can't fault Jonah for, you know, walking through the city 40 days, everything's gonna be destroyed. Oh, yeah. 39 days. Yeah. Again, days, like, uh... and he's sitting there waiting and nothing ever happens. I got it. You got to put them in the same, uh, you know, category of showing grace. Like I do the, the street preacher, you know, I, I think because they're, they're just as much as a, as a true prophet as Jonah was, honestly, that's what I think. And then, and, and whether it was wrong, it was like, it was like, there's a difference between knowing the way and walking the way, like Morpheus yeah. would say, you know, like, yeah. like they were shown specifically what they were for a specific purpose. And were they deceived or led astray by God? And, and it's not, and it's like, well, that situation could have played out that way. Yeah, all, all scenarios didn't. exist. And well, yeah, that's what a lot scenarios. of people are still on because they're still hanging on to this, <laughs> like with the QAnon stuff. And yeah. like, like I've seen a post yesterday, literally the dude said Trump is still the president in heaven. God has declared uh -huh. it in heaven and nothing has happened on earth. And Trump is still our president. I was like, oh, this is weird. This is very it's idolatry at the end of the day. And I think God's playing this master chess game. Like, how do I free my people from idolatry to politics? And most of the time it's give them up over to their idolatry and let them see how it turns out. And they're like, oh, we don't want it. We want you more. Just yeah. like in the scripture. I don't want this ruler no more, God. I'm sorry. Like, I'm really, I want you in my life again. I want you, you, yeah. you are my king. My government is upon your shoulders. Like, I'm yeah. sorry. Take this dude away, man. Yeah. Um, and it plays out like that. We know, need a, a we need a leader who would actually like humble themselves. Do you think Trump would ever humble himself? Like really? It just depends in, in your mind because uh, people think he did. Okay. They think, they think that, you know, Trump is in his prayer closet, you know, crying over the nation to free the babies. Listen, there's people who believe that, that Trump is interceding for you, that Trump has your best interest in mind. I don't believe that. Yeah. But there are people who like the, in their scenario, this is their reality. Is it yeah. true? No, I don't think it is. Could be. Yeah. I don't think it is. Uh, is it a delusion? I think so. And we begin to put them in these weird pedestals based off of documentaries, based off of scriptures we read, based off of what our pastor said with tears in his eyes, saints, pray saints, Trump's going to do this thing. Trump's doing it eight years. He needs us on his side, guys. Listen, like, and that's like compelling, like, we need him in there. He's, he's one of us. And I'm like, no, he's not. He's yeah. not one of us. And, and then, so I'm the bad guy, you know, because my, <laughs> well, for some you, reason that timeline, which exists in someone's head, um, convinced a lot of people. That's not a small thing. Like it's almost like in Christendom for us to speak against this is, is taboo. And we mark ourselves when we yeah. call BS on some of this stuff you yeah. know and it's very strange how how we got here we're seeing a lot of weird stuff right now yeah for me but even in that yeah. go ahead, go ahead. even in that our diversity it goes back to yeah. that listen i honor i think it's a delusion but i honor your delusion because you believe <laughs> isn't it, it with all, isn't it all you believe it with all your heart because yeah. of the pa the preachers who cried on camera looking deep in, listen, saints, they're looking deep in, they're making eye contact. Trump, God sent them. He woke me up in a dream, in a vision in the night. The Lord said in my right, an angel was on the left. And they're like, and you're listening to this as someone who is desperate for hope. Mm -hmm. You want hope. Mm -hmm. this, this country's going down fast. We need hope. Will you have a hope, friend? And usually back in the day, they'd say, your hope is in Jesus Christ. Repent of your sin, saints. But they're like, our hope is in Trump. God sent them. Like, what the hell? What the <laughs> hell? And they're like, he had become the Messiah of American Christianity. We talk about this. Oh, you know, you missed it, brother. You left. You did, you're not holding the line. I'm still getting these comments. Oh, I'm still brother. getting these comments. Bless Hold the you. line, brother. Continue to pray. Don't give up. God's not done with America yet. They think, yeah. you know, Biden's going to get arrested and Trump is going to come back in. Maybe, you know, that the elections were rigged, which I believe they were, but from the beginning, they've always been rigged. It's my belief. Mm, That's even yeah. controversial. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and I, I don't, I don't like to knock you off your high horse. I try to let God do that. And, and God uses us for sure. But I try to pick my battles wisely. Um, yeah. But, you know, 
to think that we can't speak on it or we just have to let them believe whatever it's uh you're going to make enemies you're going to your enemies will be that of your own household maybe mm. even your church family um yeah well there's so. there's wonderful reconciliation that happened at our church between like a trump supporter and a and a biden supporter actually and they they hugged and embraced in front of the whole church and they confessed their sin you know and it was wonderful that's awesome but you know at, at the end of the day like for me personally I just look at it all as like entertainment. It's like there's a, a movie <laughs> playing out. Isn't it is it fun. Yeah, <laughs> like because I, that's my because mindset. Because they're good writers, man. Who yeah. I, I really do feel like this is scripted. I do, and yeah. I think more people are waking up. It's kind of like it's like Neo waking up from the Matrix, and it has to be something yeah. that triggers that. And like, hold on, what's going on? This is what we're. This is our reality. This is real. This is what we have to choose from. Biden was the best thing that you had. Oh my gosh. There was, like on the Democratic side, I'll be honest with you, there's a no. lot of level headed people. Andrew Yang, there's a lot of people. Obviously, we get into politics, but you, you gave us Biden? Like Biden is who we got? To, either Biden or Trump. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird, man. You know, but it's dinner in a circus, bro. You know that. Dinner in a yeah. circus. As long as we can keep you entertained, as long as we can give you some comedic relief. You're going to keep watching and you're going to keep voting and you're going to keep asking us for, for the, you know, for the yeah. dinner. It's like a real life movie service. just playing out and we're participants in it, you know, on some small level, you know, we're characters. NPCs, non-playable characters. We're just there. Yeah. <laughs> we think that we have a say so that we can, you know, change it or whatever. And maybe we could in the past. I don't think that we can. And we're getting political. That's not my, my you know, I'm just <laughs> well, saying that, it, you know, I just it, wanted to say about just. Me bringing correction you know what yeah. i'm saying or bringing you know it's okay like i, I welcome correction as long as it's done in, in a loving way and i tried to do it in the little video i did i tried to do it in in a loving way but mm. because it was a disagreement because you know i said that they lied or whatever um people some people got offended or whatever and they're like you're this accepting grace person now you're not supposed to bring correction or whatever and it's so weird how maybe people have projected that on me and i've kind of went out of my way not to to correct people when they're wrong because i used that's all i used to do so me just mm -hmm. like you that religious side of you that you're like hey man stay down stay down i'm not gonna say it um yeah. i've done that i've self-censored yeah. you know and i'm not like i'm not doing it anymore you can, you can kind of tap into that but it's like listen i just want to respond to every situation with grace and truth and humility and show whether somebody's in error or whether I'm in error, just to approach it with, with humility, I guess, you know, and honor people in their delusion. I know that sounds weird. I know that sounds crazy, but I mean, we all have our own ideas of, of what's, what's real and what the scenarios that are playing out. And they're just, they are, they are playing out just in our heads, you know? Yes. I think everybody has their own delusion, honestly, you know, like it's all, it's a, here's the way I look at it. Like it's all fiction when you, when you really break it down, like God said, let there be light. He's making stuff up, you know, and it didn't, it never stopped. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> we're just continuing creating. We're making stuff up. It's all fiction. We're a fictional character in the mind of God, but he honors, he honors all our stories though. I know, you know? just like with, with, and it's weird to think about. The Pinocchio becomes a real boy. <laughs> what is, like all scenarios are true. Like, I believe that even if they're not, if they don't, obviously if, if you can get enough people to believe it, then it becomes like the reality of the collective. Yeah. Um, here's your, here's your two candidates. You know, this is who you got to pick. Like um, that's an example, but I feel like everything that you believe shows itself to you in your mind, in your world. And you begin to see that everywhere. You know, if you believe in hell and, and destruction and God's judgment is coming back to destroy the wicked, when you walk outside, when you go to the mall, you're, you can't see a beautiful individual that God created. Maybe you do, but you see them like they're going to hell. That yeah. person's going to die. Your family's going to hell. That little baby's going to go to hell. Aww. All these people are going to hell. And you, that's your filter and that's your reality. And, and you begin to respond to that reality because it's your conviction and you believe it a hundred percent. Let's just go crazy. A like paranoid schizophrenic. He thinks that all those people are trying to kill them. And this is real. I mean, yeah. in their mind, they go into the mall, the same mall past those same people. Oh my God. 
these people are these people are gonna kill me. These people are trying to kill me. They, yeah. They're thinking of why they keep why is everybody looking at me? And you're in the same, but your reality is different. The way that you perceive what's going on, and you go home and you lock yourself in your room and you try not to come out because you everybody's trying to kill you outside of your room. Is is it real? Are they really trying to do that? I don't think so. But in in your mind, in the way that you respond. I don't uh, think to so. the world around you, you created it, you know? Yeah. That's how powerful consciousness is in our imaginations. Yes. Yes. And that's how we have to renew our mind. Yeah. To the we're obedience manifestors of, of our own reality to a large degree. Yeah. God is sovereign and so are you. And so that's what yep. I like to say about it. Yeah. And it's the power that our, our mind has to create and to shape and to shift and and there's so many parallel, what we're seeing right now is like, there's so many, you, we can call it timelines, we can call it um, realities that are taking place that we're passing by, the, we're passing by those people in the mall who think that we're going to kill them. And we're like, why is that guy staring at me? And you're like, do I have something in my beard? <laughs> oh, I got cheese dip in my beard from the restaurant. No, you think you're going to kill them. Oh, this person thinks I'm going to hell. Hey, man, what's going on? The Lord says, repent. Oh, Lord. Like, you know what I'm saying? These different yeah. realities that coexist. Listen, I'm going to stay. I honor your reality, no matter what it is. It, you know, if I can be of service, if I can help you find a more graceful reality, which mm. is in Christ. Exactly. Which is the beauty yeah. of God and his rest and his love for you. That is the best way to view people of how much God loves them. And, and, uh, and maybe a little bit is in that, uh, a person that thinks everybody's going to hell. Maybe it, maybe a little bit of it is in the schizophrenic who thinks they're going to, maybe everybody's trying to kill them because they sinned. You know what I'm saying? And these time lap, they overlap, but it is true. Like everybody believes something else. Again, people think that Trump is, is still the president right now. Mm -hmm. Biden will tell them stuff. Nope. Nope. You're not the president. You're not my president. I mean, we just seen four years of of liberals saying Trump is not my president, not my yeah. president. He's yeah. not my president. Even with Obama, he's not my president. Uh, and the same thing is happening now. Like, listen, no, he is your president. He's your president. No, he's not. He's not not in my line. Not not if I have any say so. Well, you you had to say so with your vote. It didn't work out. He's your president. No, he's not. And you know what I'm saying? There's just all of these. That's how we walk in the supernatural. That's how we, you know, well, we see yeah. the, the reality of the matrix that can be shifted and molded. Someone's circumstance can change for the better. Someone who is a paraplegic can get up and walk. You know, his reality is, look, I'm stuck here. I'm screwed. I don't have my legs anymore. But it is a holy man, somebody like Christ who comes up and says, hold on. I see a reality in your future where, where you're walking. Mm -hmm. I see, a, I know you're demon possessed and I know you cut yourself and my heart goes out to you, but there's a reality that exists where you're made whole. And I'm going to be that bridge into that, into a peaceful, loving, beautiful reality that it should be our mantle is what we should be mission and mandated to do. And we are, um, but all of those exist within the people hopeless if somebody will pick me up and put me in the water when it moves and i will be healed i can't quite make it here's jesus hey listen you i'm here now you know forget that um you can take some person being able to see that to see the hope yeah. and see the outcome and i guess that what i'm saying with those people who believe in these different you know they think that that is the answer that if trump like you know of, of a world that is dying and going to hell a world that is lost if Trump is president, things will fix. We don't mm. want, we, we lost, they, they won't admit it. They think that if, and, cause they're, they have good intentions, pure intentions. They may be even more righteous and more, you know what I'm saying? More holier or it's grandmothers have, have this, you know, old grandmothers who are you're literally intercessors and prayer warriors believe this, you know, and it, that's their reality. And if they can inspire the change, in this, you know, if they can pray Trump back in or petition heaven, I hope this makes sense. I know you have to follow it, it a, a little bit, but um, yeah. 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 I, I so appreciate what you're saying because 
I was hearing what I was hearing you say is like, we can be that Jesus who envisions a better future. And like, I, I, I envision a future where you walk. I envision a future where you're healed and let me be the bridge. You know, Christ is in me. Let me be the bridge for your healing, for you to connect with that reality, because the reality of the kingdom of heaven, the reality of the way of the tree of life, the reality of like, Oh, first and foremost, and perhaps only let's go there, a citizen of heaven and not of this earth or any mm -hmm. nation, you know, yep. to where I can say, Jesus is my president, you know, like for real, like that's not even a trite thing or a, you know, a cop out or anything. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is my president, captain, my captain, you know. I love yeah, that. Again, I know, I know it's, it's even projecting, but I, you know, those people feel like they, they would agree with you, but from their perspective, you know, of mm. this is what it is. Okay. Yeah. We need to get you in the truth of God, but that is, you know, making your own sign and hitting the street corner to live in the reality <laughs> of the true kingdom of God, you know, to really yeah. be doing God's will create your sign, come out with a Saturday night, hold up these signs on the side of the road. God will change. You know what I'm saying? So we project onto people, even that, even that healing, you know what I'm saying? We project that healing on the people. Listen, I see a, I see a reality where you run. No, it's not in my reality. Like this thorn in my flesh is, is here to, to serve me that God, God knows what he's doing and I'm going to love him regardless. Yeah. I'm not going to fall in love with him if he heals me. Yeah, I will but I fall in love with them, even though I'm created this way, um, that, that I was born this way. And, uh, and I can still love him where, where your love is on conditions. If you get healed, yeah, like you, you only love him if he, if he heals you, that? if he yeah. shows up and saves you at the end of the day, my, my love is just, I'm thankful that my lungs work perfectly, even though my legs don't work. Like I have a great upper body strength and God has blessed me in other areas that I'm, I'm grateful. And I found gratitude in, uh, in, in my weakness where God is still strong. And so we try to protect, well, you got to get healed, man. God wants you to walk, dude. Mm -hmm. You want to play basketball, man? It's fun. You need to walk. And, uh, and, and even with that whole idea we've been talking about on, on our Thursday nights is that, the scripture that says, you know, why is that person a paraplegic? Why were they born that way? And in and, 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 and charism charismania, we believe so we can heal them because the scripture, Jesus says it, it was to bring glory to God. So that, that yeah. to, to, to bring glory to God and to the son of man. So we're thinking, oh, we heal them. We pray for them. <clears throat> they pick up their mat and walk away and they're healed because that's what jesus was doing so that's what we're supposed to do we see the person who's a paraplegic we pray for them the legs straighten up they walk away we've done it many times doesn't doesn't work they don't what's my faith i didn't believe it enough or the person didn't want it the person had unconfessed sin and even they asked them yeah why was that person born this way is it because of generational curses is it because their mom and dad sinned or the, their grandparents sinned no 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 it's not that's not why they're like that they are that way to bring glory to the son of god um so we think we're supposed to heal them. But now I'm like, hold on. That person is content. Like, even though we see that as something that we would be mad at God, maybe they were, maybe they went through 17 years of being disgruntled and upset. And now they just reached this level of um, godliness with contentment is great gain. Maybe that makes sense to them now that, listen, I don't have my legs, but I have my breath. I have my heartbeat. I have my eyesight. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for every second that, listen, I barely made it out of the womb. I'm not mm -hmm. supposed to be here. My disease, my sickness almost cost me my life, but I'm still here. And they reach this level of, of gratitude that is envious because we're we're not content because we, our bills aren't paid. We're not in our dream job. We don't have a spouse yet. Our kids are sick. Our kids are running from God. You know what I'm saying? And so we put these conditions that we'll be happy if when the person who should be disgruntled, who should be mad, shaking their fist at God is living at perfect peace with God and all of creation with no legs. And we've seen this in ministers and people. There's a little guy who doesn't have arms or legs and he's a preacher. They, they brought him up on Oprah and he's like, he's hopping up the stairs and he's preaching the gospel and how much he is madly in love with Jesus. And we're like, Hey bro, uh, has anybody told you, you don't have arms and legs? He's, 
How are you going to get married? How are you going to provide for your family? He's got a wife and kids and all kinds of stuff now. And this dude doesn't have arms and legs, but he's fully content and thankful for his existence here. So it's like, listen, this person, when I look at them and I see how content and how much they love God in their present circumstance and situation, um, that's it the should, glory of God. It, it yeah. should move me to, man, I want what you have because I'm upset that my bills aren't paid this month and I have to figure out how they're going to get paid. You're content regardless of not having legs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a new way to look at that God. scripture, man, yeah. but I, I definitely see that aspect. Thank you for sharing that. You're helping me to see that too. I think that, that I, a lot of people need to hear that message, you know? Because it's not just the glory of God that, that the, the person was healed. No, it's the glory of God, their life and, and all that all that they learned and all you know, all of life's challenges build for us a character that's the glory of God, that glorifies God. Yeah. So Yeah, you then that person moves from being a victim, you know, and it's circumstances and situations that happen until you 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 know, okay, this isn't changing. No, you don't want to set in it and, and, and just give up, but you're like, hold on. Like we all do that, you know, whether it's giving up on something or a dream or whatever, but it's just really the, you know, American Christianity and, and consumerism and Western culture is like, we never have enough. That was the problem with the prosperity gospel. And, uh, and I, re I believe that God wants to prosper us and wants us to enjoy life and to travel and to have the things that we want and to see the world. Listen, I, listen, you're missing out if you don't do that. Um, and God wants you to do that. And it takes finances and things to do it. But uh, the prosperity gospel, th th there was never enough. There was never a godly, listen, it's this godliness with contentment is great gain. That's something that we should be seeking. And it doesn't have anything to do with your monetary status or how much money you have in the bank or how much anointing you're walking in. It's like, listen, God is, God is good. And he's, he's got me no matter what I'm doing. If I'm betting, like I can do all things through Christ. If I'm, if I'm a beggar, not a beggar, I don't think God wants you to be a beggar. You never see the righteous godly begging and righteous forsaken begging for bread but no matter where you are if you're in jail if you're in prison like paul was like i i can do all things through christ no matter where i am my heart is elated i wasn't i'm not i wasn't i wasn't supposed to live this long i was supposed to be gone a long time ago every day is a blessing to me you know yeah amen well derek i just want to thank you for your time too and uh just for how do people connect with you? Let's just uh, truth seeker on YouTube. Everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. I'll, I'll have some, the links in the description. Yeah, truth seeker on everything. Um, I have a podcast. You know, I go live twice a week, and we do. We have an online community, um, and um, everything's on the truth seeker. Though we beautiful community, man, of people all over the world. We we do live stream prayer on on Thursday nights. It's really what I. I look forward to even yeah. more than the discussions and, and talking to the, the people and about their walk and stuff. Nice. I really love tapping into his presence with uh, a lot of people and offering prayer and stuff where people are and just letting them know, just offering an opportunity for them to taste and see that the Lord is good and, uh, and people can tap in with us. So got a bunch of stuff. I wrote a book last year, Yes, actually a year before that it's been <laughs> 20 in the 2019. So I have I a book it. out. Yeah. Uh, which talks about the sovereignty of God and seeing his beauty in everything, even in the negative circumstances and, and situations, which is huge. Um, but yeah, truth seek on everything. Look me up. Thanks for having me on Daniel. And I know we have a, uh, a talk scheduled for my show as well. We're going to have you on and uh, it'll be good. Enjoy right. it and continue our conversation. Yes. Bless you, brother. Have All right, bro. Day. Thanks so much. Shalom. Peace. Shalom.